developing content for a video game is never an easy task. And in this week's episode, we take a look at some of the games with the best ongoing support. And we also share our comments on the Resident Evil 2 one-shot demo. This is Advanced Level a Video Game Podcast, and the podcast starts right now. another episode of Advanced Level of Video Game Podcast. My name is Felipe Parada. Join with me is Oscar Portillo. Oscar, what's going on, my man? Hey, Felipe, what's up, man? Listen, I'm just going to get right into it. Yeah, let's get right in. We had the opportunity to play the Resident Evil 2 one-shot demo. Right. We played it. It's up on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch it right now. It, it was a half the an hour. The entire demo. The entire demo. You know, I think you, twice, by the way. You, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You <laughs> went beyond the constructs of the, of the, the game code. Because I'm still waiting for Capcom to send me a, a, a note. I am so, I'm shocked that not only were you able to get sort of to the end of the demo, because not many people got to the very end. I didn't realize that you really did get to the end of the demo. And then I got, <laughs> with the like 10 minutes left, with, I, we just with, restarted. Yeah, exactly. With time to spare, which not for nothing, that's very impressive. Well, I didn't see, um, I, I think there was a liquor somewhere. Now... I'm glad that we were both able to play it. I was able to play it once, and then I joined you on your session, and I was able to watch you play. Believe me when I tell you, two drastically different playthroughs, because I'll describe exactly what happened in mine. It started off roughly the same. I was able to find the shotgun. Mm, Where where was it? It was on a different a different area. Like if toward you know how you when you as soon as you walk into the police precinct, there's the right side and the left side. You somehow managed to go all the way around, and you managed to be on the second floor coming back into the... Yeah, I opened that door that led me back to the... the I ended up up continuing to go left. I managed Hmm. to find a shotgun and the weapons armory. Oh, wow. Where you have, like, the lockers, and you have just, like, weapons everywhere. But the problem is you can't get to it because the, I guess, the numbers on the number pad, there were two numbers that were missing. So you had to find those numbers in order to open the lockers. Okay. And I was able to find a couple of wooden boards to board up the windows. Mm, where do you remember where that was? I don't remember. I honestly okay. don't remember. And you remember in the begin in the very very beginning, mm-hmm. where you go towards the back of the hall and you find like a statue with like kind of a puzzle. It had like icons on it, and if you rotate it, it changes. Like one was a scale, the other one was. A yeah, fish. I remember that. If you remember the guy who you tried to save and he got ripped apart, right? He had the book, and inside that okay. book. There was a sketch, and there mm. were these red arrows pointed to the head of a lion, and that was the clue to solve that puzzle. And I was able to get, uh, uh, I think it's the lion's medallion. Okay. So when I saw your playthrough, I'm like, wow, it's drastically different than the way I played it. And that's right. what I absolutely loved about the demo. Two people yeah. playing it, two completely different outcomes, because I didn't finish the demo. Time, right. little, time eventually ran out. You got you to the very end. To the... When you meet up with a guy again? No, I did not hmm. get that. That's where you got that far. It was a really good run with 10 minutes to spare. I have a feeling you're going to be one of those guys that are just going to run through the game with just a knife. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not that good. I can't, I can't even. I don't know if you remember the one zombie that I can't even take down. Like, yeah, he that, kept coming back. That was a little. I don't know if it's, it's if it was like the beta code or okay. something, but some of these enemies took way too long yeah. to take down. Way getting, too long. You're getting some headshots, and I'm like, come on. You were getting some pretty and – and the funny thing is you took down some guys, and somehow they still managed to come back. Like the guy, the, the Snickers guy. Yeah. Killed him. <laughs> he was on the floor. He was done. You left the room, came back. He was, oh, yeah. He, he was alive. Back. I forgot about that. He was resurrected. You know. And my question to you is you played the original Resident Evil 2. Right. Now seeing – because this is not their first sort of soiree into remakes because remember, they, they redid the original – the mm-hmm. original Resident Evil, which one. I thought was an amazing remake. I really loved that remake because they still kept a lot of the original stuff, but they added more to kind of change it up a little bit. I don't remember Resident Evil 2 that much, but I- I'm pretty sure that you... Yeah, it, it, it's really, like I said in, in the playthrough, um, it's my favorite one of the, of the franchise. I remember the two discs, um, Oh my God! the, the two, two intros, discs. how you start the game in the... Uh, in the alleyway, and then you had, you find the guy in the in the gun store. How do you think this game's gonna fare? Your honest opinion. 
I mean, I've been reading it's it's tracking to really almost outdo Resident Evil Seven as far as um, in the beginning. You played the demo; it looks awesome. It's if if a remake, if somebody's going to do a remake, this is the way to do it. And remember, this is not their first time doing a remake. So right. I thought it was a, when they first announced the remake. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, haha, okay, somebody did like a nice fan remake. But no, once they announced it, I'm like. Okay, this is it's it's real now. We were able to get the demo. It's now it's real, real. It's getting, it's we're a couple of weeks away. Yeah. From the demo, I mean not from the actual full game, release. Yeah. And mm-hmm. of course, you got that trailer at the end. You got Hunk and you got Tofu. I am. Um, I read there's going to be DLC with the game, but like not like unpaid. Like it's going to be in the game. But what kind of DLC can they release for this game? I think it's going to be a mercenary kind of mode or it, something like that. I honest to God hope they release mercenary modes for Resident Evil 2. Or even... I, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but that's... I know the two modes uh, with Honk and, and Tofu. Or even like... Like you said, you've never played the Revelations, Resident Evil Revelations. Right. But they have like a, an evolved version of mercenary mode called Raid Mode. Which is... It's the same premise, but it's more of... It has a lot of RPG elements in it. Okay. I hope... I hope to God either they bring back mercenaries or they bring raid mode into Resident Evil 2 because... They said something like an extra chapter, like another chapter. You, I, I don't know what it could be. Do you think somehow, okay, somehow, and, and I'm pretty versed in the Resident Evil universe, do you think they're going to somehow combine Resident Evil 2 with Resident Evil 3 because they both pretty much take place right. parallel to one another? That would be a little too much. Not a nice thought. I don't think they're going to go that far with the remake. Yeah, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I think they they see money in this. Oh yeah, there's there's, there's money in it. People. So we're gonna see probably a Resident Evil three expansion, remake. maybe. No, no, I think we're gonna get another remake. Really? You you think the the money's there for the remakes? Oh yeah. Don't you think it's gonna waste too much resources though? Because remember, to remake these games, you have to pump in a lot of resources and a lot of cash to, and to remake. Is still, everything is already there. Right. You just have to kind of you know. I, I don't think it's. The juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> you know what? That's the in first. That's the first time I've heard you use the word squeeze and juice in the <laughs> same sentence. In this case, it's worth the squeeze. Now, do I hear day one purchase? <sighs> it can depend when it comes out. To be honest with you, uh, <laughs> if we know the release date, I want to say <sighs> January. I want to say January twenty twenty fifth. I know I'm wrong. You know what? I, I was right. Initial release date is January 25th of 2019. Okay. So we're not we're there, but we're not there yet. I can see day one. Oh man, you're not a day one guy. I'm really not. But this game really. Um, I, I remember in high school, um, people were talking about it. This game does have a special place for me. I remember in high school, right? Finishing up my classes, because this the original came out, what, in 90... Was it 90... No. I want to say 96, because... Maybe you... I, I don't know. But I remember playing the first one, and I was still, I was in high school. And the second one came a little bit... Like, two, like I want to say a year or two later. I'm, trying to, I'm really trying to think as far as the original, which came out in 2002. No, that's got to be the remake, obviously. The first one came out on PS1. That was in 97, I believe. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, 96. I'm sorry, 96. Okay. So the other one had to come out relatively, relatively short, which was, it had to have been 98. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I, I just, I remember exactly where I was, like, reading about it. Where were in you? The, in, the, in the auditorium. Oh, it was released on January 21st, 1998. So I was right, 98. Yeah. I mean, I was reading about it, like, in a magazine in the auditorium. I remember picking up this game. It was, I think Funko Land was still a thing. I believe you. I don't remember where I bought it, but I know I bought it. I remember I specifically bought it at a Funko Land in North Bergen. I literally took the bus to get there, picked it up, went home. That I think this was the very first game that I had that used two discs. Yeah, I was, that, sounds, that sounds about right. This, to me, was such a foreign... Yeah, hey, you have no idea what that was. Like, because that, that was mainly PC. So when yeah, I was like, nah. what the... I'm like, what is this? And each disc was a, a playable character. Man, when I popped in those discs, and, and remind you, this is 98, the, the whole Resident Evil, it just opened up. Right. And to yeah, see... Yeah, this is a... To, for me, 
This is still the best combination of action and horror. Yeah, I would have to agree with you on that one. By the time part three came out, and they already the Nemesis was a cool idea, running around and deciding if you want to fight or, or run. I, I do like that idea, but it was a little bit more action already, and obviously with the sequel four and five and six. And at first, when they announced the the one shot demo, I'm like, really, just that's it? It's just a one and done deal. But you know what? After playing through it. Well, we played through it twice, technically. Right. Wait, no, no, wait, you know what? Three times. Three times, yeah. Yeah, three times. I played through mine, and then you played through yours twice. I think the the one-shot demo was was a perfect way to release the demo, at least in my opinion. Because it gave it gave you a little taste. It gave you that, you know, you know you're eating the, the, the chicken and you're just licking the, the sauce off your fingers. Well, that's it. <laughs> now you got to wait. It's a good idea. I, I, don't, I, don't, I still don't like... I'm not a fan of it, but I, I understand why they did it. It's a, I get it. It's ge- it's generating <laughs> yeah, it's generating hype for this game. I mean, generating buzz. You know, half an hour. That's it. Now you got to wait for the game to come out, and we're giving you hunk. We're giving you tofu. We're giving you all of what you remember about Resident Evil Two. But now it's completely remade. How are you not going to get excited? Even I'm excited. There's no even if you have even kind of a little excitement about it. I imagine this remake is blowing everybody away. Is there? A, do you see a price there? Mm, I doubt, I'm I'm pretty sure the price is normal fifty nine ninety nine. No, I don't, that uh, no, it can't be. What I, the I, the Resident Evil remake? The, yeah. the two? Mm. You think you think it's fifty nine ninety nine? No. I'd be shocked if it's fifty nine ninety nine. It's still not a new game. Yeah, but you know the amount of the only reason I'm saying that is because the amount of resources they pumped in. This is a brand new Resident Evil Two game, don't you think? Mm-hmm. At least I look at Shadow of the Colossus. That, that's, oh, that was almost a brand new game itself, and it was like forty dollars. Forty is fine. Oh, was it forty? Yeah, I bought that day one. Oh yeah, I, I knew you bought that day one. Yeah, I, I forty is okay. Um, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, anything above that, I I can't. I'm not. I probably still get it. I just. When you feel as comfortable, if I got it at full price, I mean, I, yeah. I I would still be I'd be okay. It's still not a new game. Yeah, a court, uh, now I'm looking on GameStop.com right now. Buy new fifty nine ninety nine. Wow. Yeah, fifty nine ninety nine. I have no doubt that this. Then, then now it's <laughs> now I got that guy. No, no longer day one. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna get it, but I don't know what they want now. Full price? That. I mean, I had a feeling it was gonna typical, be full price. Typical, typical Capcom. Yeah, but you know what? They know people are gonna buy this game. Exactly. Thank you. They know people are gonna buy this game, so why not charge full price? Wow, that's. I'm surprised. Like I'm really right. I'm like I'm. I'm taking it back. Fifty nine ninety nine. That's and regular. There's no special edition that. that Oh, no, it just says uh, Resident Evil 2, buy, download, buy new. I don't see any special editions. Or there could be, but I'm, I'm just not. Yeah, that night, you know, right? I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, Resident Evil 2 Deluxe Edition. Oh, here we go. $69.99. Wow. That... <laughs> <laughs> let's hear it. Come on, let's hear it. You're killing me over here. I, that, that's not me. That's that's. I know. I, you're, you're the messenger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't hit the messenger. I... Now listen, listen, okay. For the pre-order of Resident Evil Two, what do you get for pre-order? Six, for sixty nine ninety nine, okay. <laughs> you get two bonus weapons. That's it. I I am reading it right now. Pre-order Resident Evil Two and receive two what bonus weapons. What are they? Stars members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine's signature Samurai Edge handguns. I don't even remember that. I mean, I'm sure it was in the game. I just. Oh, and, and, I apologize. Let me retract. Resident Evil 2 Deluxe Edition also contains the full game, duh, and a download voucher for the following bonus items. Leon Costume, Arclay Sheriff, Leon Costume, Noir, Claire Costume, Military, Claire Costume, Noir, Claire Costume, Elsa Walker, Deluxe Edition obviously comes with the Samurai Edge, and Classic Resident Evil 2 Soundtrack Swap, whatever that means. What is that? Maybe you could put the original soundtrack as you're playing. Okay, that's still that's that's not worth six ninety nine. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm looking at this now. Is like this is okay. This is Capcom. 
get yeah, in its, it's own way. Yeah, typical Capcom. Yeah, let's squeeze our our player base for as much money as we can. Wow, You're... I know I'm killing you. I know I'm killing you. I'm killing I really myself. like. I really liked when I played. That's the thing. You see, you see what I mean? They knew what they were doing. They knew people are going to buy this game. What do they do? Bam! They hit you with the full price. And now, now it's different. And now the thirty-minute thing is like I see it now as my opinion changed as we talk. Like <laughs> now, what do you mean your opinion changed? Like what is what about it changed? I see the one-shot demo now as almost like a nefarious kind of like people, they know people are going to buy this game, so let's give them a little taste of it. And then they, I'm surprised they didn't give us like the best part of the game or something. Well, come on, you know they can't, they can't give you, you know, a magician will never reveal the best part of the, <laughs> of the best part of their act. It's That's the, true. That's fine. It's the same thing. Like we knew, you know, these developers, and I'm sorry, and I'm, I apologize if it's going more into like this other type, kind of topic, but developers have to find new and creative ways to generate buzz in regards to their games. But I don't see this. I, I see creating buzz. In the wrong way. Yes, because not for nothing, the player base, gamers, are extremely intelligent nowadays. They know when they're getting suckered, and they're not going to fall for it. So they have to... I feel like but again, I read, on, I read it on another site that it's, it's going to outsell Resident Evil 7 um, on day one. And there That's you what go. it's tracking anyway. There, there we go. And you know what? It is going to outsell Resident Evil 7. Do we know what is the most, not most popular, but the... Like sell, sell. Yeah, the highest selling Resident Evil game? I think it's 7, but I... You can... So, I'm doing a quick search. And I'm looking to see which is the highest selling Resident Evil game. You know, prices were, well, not that different, but they were different enough. I'll let you guess. All right, well, I am, I am, I did look it up as well. Oh, okay. Never, never mind then. Because from what I see, okay, from what I see, yeah, the highest selling Resident Evil game was Resident Evil Five. Yeah, that's what I see. You're looking at twelve million, one hundred forty thousand. That's interesting. Really, Resident Evil Five. That's kind of a bit of a shocker. And at, coming in at number two is Resident Evil Two, six million one hundred fourteen thousand. That, that, that's interesting to hear that Resident Evil Five though is the best one. Because the best selling one. Remember, I think at the time. When Resident Evil 5 came out, or when they announced Resident Evil 5, there was a, a, a long hiatus from Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 5. And it was coming off... Some people say Resident Evil 4 is the best one. Oh, of course. Like, it, so I would some, have, I, it was coming off of that one. So people automatically are thinking it's going to be on par on with my on, on my top Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 4 is at the top. It is the best Resident Evil game by far, in my opinion. And then coming in at number two is Resident Evil 2. But I know the Resident Evil 2 remake is going to take that top spot. And then, obviously, the, the original Resident Evil. Yeah. That's well, interesting that they hear those numbers, though. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense because Resident Evil 4 was hot. Red hot. And to see Resident Evil 5 and the size of Chris's biceps? <laughs> come on. How is that not going to outsell? Exactly. And, of course, then we played the game and we saw the infamous you know, punching up the boulder and the rest is history. But you do, have to, admit, mean, you do have to admit, though, we played the hell out of Resident Evil 5. Did. So we got, we got a lot of juice out of that squeeze. <laughs> man, you with the squeezing, man. <laughs> I don't think how many times I like... <laughs> No, but it, it listen, as, as upset as we can get at Capcom. I just, I, I just hate, they know. <laughs> I know, dude, I know. 20,000 is fine. Why? It's a remake. <laughs> Dude, I completely I completely agree with you. I completely agree and playing the demo sort of re revisiting. Yeah, they knew exactly what they were doing. Now it just sour my taste a little bit here cuz I'm still going to get it. But I just But now it's it's just a matter of when now. Yeah, it, it does it did bring me down a little bit. It's not a brand new game. I mean, they use it's the same. I mean, it's not the same, but I mean, the, the, you're still in the the precinct. It, it looks almost. It looks very similar. Right. But I just don't, don't like hearing that stuff. I mean, that's kind of you know, you you had your ice cream and now you got to take your vegetables. <laughs> that's the best way. That's the I best way. That's the best way to put it. You know, you you know, you everything looked good. You had your ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, whatever you like. Nah, you got to take the, the vitamins. Now you got to take your vegetables. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Oh, I have no reason to think it's going to disappoint. And that's the thing. We both know 
we're, we're not lying to ourselves when we both agree that this game is going to be the top game of 2019. Is it safe to say that after playing the demo? I don't know about that. Come on. It, it's pretty good. I mean, it's good, but like uh, when you compare it, maybe the, I heard The Last of Us might come out. It, it'll be the game of, of the early, put it on the uh, Game of the Year watch. Put it on the Game of the Year watch. Because remember, Last of Us has not been, well, although some people say it has, some people say it hasn't. Hasn't been confirmed yet, 100% for 2019. So I will put Resident Evil 2, the remake, on our... On There's our, a rumor going watch. around. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know. If, I don't think this is true. We're going a little bit off topic, but I've heard, I read a rumor that Death Stranding in 2019. You know what? I want to believe it. I want to wholeheartedly believe... If somebody that... t- tweeted, uh, like a, a dev or somebody, uh, tweeted something out that, oh, big news is coming soon. <laughs> Like I said, now, I know Kojima. We know Kojima kind of met, likes to mess with us. Well, it's not that he likes to mess with us. He likes to take his time developing games. No, no, no. I'm saying he likes to troll the fans a little oh, bit. Of you know? course, come on. It wouldn't be Kojima if, he, if he's not trolling us. So I just, so I'm not taking it with a grain of salt. Um, but there's a the rumor going around. Right. Just to, you know. Now, my next question to you is: How many hours do you see yourself piling when you do get Resident Evil? How many hours do you see yourself putting into this game? Because remember, there's two storylines. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out, right? Right, yeah. Um, what is it going to be two completely separate storylines or... I'm thinking it's going to be like the original, two completely okay. separate storylines. They have they have to leave it that way. Okay, I, I have no problem with that. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how long the game is, so I can't tell you. I mean, come on, you're gonna you, there's going to be collectibles and there's going to be challenges, I'm assuming. I mean, I don't... Collectibles is like quite 10... Like that, like ten items, or do you, re- you remember? The, do you remember the collectibles in Resident Evil Five, where you had to shoot the medallions? All oh, right, okay. That's probably what I'm thinking. Okay, because you know every game has to have it somewhere, some some sort of. I think Part Six had that too, right? I bu- yes, yes, they had it as well. I mean, I see myself pumping a lot of time into this, but no, I, I, I do too. Yeah, I mean, I, I see myself, but not as much as I've pumped other games. You know, the amount of time that I've pumped into other games. I know we've been we've been playing a lot of games and we pump a lot of hours into it, but they decided to remake this game. Are they going to be able to continually support this game? I, I think um, there's like I said, there's some DLC coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not so that they will they're supporting it. And that's what I'm saying. If they somehow manage to get mercenaries or raid mode into it, they can support this game for for years with with contents and and events and stuff. Oh, like mercenaries that. is. Almost as popular as the game itself. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. If they manage to work it in, they could support this game for a while. Which kind of brings the topic of which games out there right now, whether it be current or whether previous generations, that constantly are the best games that receive, I guess, constant support. A steady stream of support, whether it be updates, content, events. Like, which games can we say, like, wow... Even after two, three years, these games are still going strong because of the content that's constantly being fed. Well, the first one you want to mention is uh, your favorite game. Which one? Uh, no Man's Sky. Oh, of course. They had this category in the video the game awards. awards. Right. All right, and obviously it went to Fortnite. But I really honestly think No Man's Sky should have gotten some sort of recognition because what they were able well, they, to do. They got nominated. That, that yeah, they got they nominated, but I don't think the nomination is enough. First of all, all the games in that category deserve to win at least something because the amount of support okay. that these games have gotten is beyond anything that has come that has come before it, in my opinion. Well, yeah, if, we've talked about No Man's Sky before and how in the see, beginning yeah, it wasn't. If, if you see Vanilla No Man's Sky, and there, there are some videos out there on YouTube kind of highlighting the big changes and stuff, it is a completely yeah, it's different not even the game. Same game. It's not even the same game. I mean, yeah, you know, you have some of the the issues that are still there, and you have the grind loop, and some of the problems st- still kind of haven't been solved as far as that aspect of it. But the amount of but the amount of content they've added yeah. to that game, and mind you, it's a it's a game that you go from planet to planet, and it's five quint quintillion different different planets, and then to add additional content on top of that, really, bravo. Yeah, I I, I mean I have. Played it. I see your playthroughs. Uh, their let's play sometimes. Yes. And I, I see it. I do respect them for bringing the game. This is the game that they wanted to release. Yeah, this I is the game so. that they wanted to release two years ago. And right. 
a lot of people were already claiming this game is dead. That's it. It's it's over. It's done with. Hello Games is 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 done. But no, they came back and they pretty much said and they've and it's not even the content. It's updating the the player base. This is what we're working on. This is our release schedule. They they kept us informed every step of the way. This is what we're gonna release, and they've released it within a very very reasonable time frame. Yeah. I mean, the first year alone, they released a new patch pretty much every, I want to say, four months. That's not bad. We're talking about major patches. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a good way to put it. Not not just... Not just, okay, we're going to patch this, we're going to fix this. No, no, no. We're talking about major patches that have completely changed the structure of the game. And they released a... Their last patch was, I think, called Visions, where... Remember, <laughs> remember what you told me? is like, oh, yeah, you have a red planet, a blue planet, a yellow planet, and they're, right. they're all pretty much... no. Every planet is completely different now. Okay. When they tell you, oh, yeah, every planet is different. It has different animals. It has different fauna. Like flora and fauna, they really mean it this time. Every planet you go to is completely different, and you can tell. And I remember you bought this game. How long ago now? Um, I bought it when they first announced the Atlas Rising. Was it Atlas Rising? Which was about a year in. So I bought it a year after the game initially released. And, and even, even from when you bought it to now. Completely different. Right. And then on top of that, it, it changed even more. You know, they added the one thing that they did was they add they finally added multiplayer. Now, have you tried it? Yes. Is Gabe it... and I have played and it is like you said, it's the game that they originally wanted to release. Okay. Just going around and just exploring with your friends, going to different planets, it it's one of those games that is just this game was made for multiplayer. But in a good way. It's not that and, and people aren't trolling and people no no. People are actually getting together, you know, okay. the more support one of the most supportive communities out there. So it's nothing competitive, nothing like it, that. There's nothing competitive about it. People are going, people are sharing what they've discovered. You know, hey, do you do you need any resources? There are people out there that are just giving out resources. Okay. Hey, I have an, an abundance of a specific uh a specific item. Do you want any? And you know, the, well, you'll do some trading and that's it, you'll be on your way. Okay, I like that. You know, some people are are out there. They're showing off their ships. Oh, where'd you get this ship? You know, oh, I got it in this sector, so on and so forth. They're showing off their freighters. You know, so it's a very, very supportive community. And I'm very, I'm very shocked at how positive this community is. And big, big shout out to uh to the No Man's Sky community. Really, they they are, they are, they are really yeah, they are really what 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 made the game. Another game that came to mind was the Division. Right, we we both played the the the, the oh, We uh, have both sunk in time to the division. It was up the other day, right? It was like two hundred hours or something. something well, like I, that. I looked. At, I, you know, they, you're able to look up the stats on the app, the Ubisoft app. I looked up yours. Yours is two hundred and forty-two hours, but a two hundred and forty-two solid hours. <laughs> right, me, I'm up to three hundred and twenty-one hours in the division alone. And that that game is very interesting because the how can we first of all, let's talk about the the campaign because the campaign we were, we was were in good. It, before you start we were in it from day one yeah 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 even I think we played the beta too right we played the beta I was in it literally day one so, yeah, we, so we we have yeah. seen this game evolve we had our rather unique experiences in the dark zone right. <laughs> And now we're towards sort of the end of the life cycle of the division. I'm sure we're done because Division Two is yeah, coming out. Yeah, the division. The original three. division is pretty much done. They've released a lot, a lot of patches for this game. New content, rebalancing of weapons, uh, time to kill. They've they've adjusted. The only thing that pretty much didn't get adjusted was the dark zone. And they did try. Um, this the gear. Um, if you found a certain gear, that was it. Um, you were unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, um, th- that was pretty much it. You you can never go into the dark zone alone. No, I've I've tried, and it, it was by far the worst experience. I would just want to say the the campaign was really good, or well, it was good, but that was the only thing that didn't stay that stayed untouched, pretty much. Right, that was the only. I mean, how many times did we play the Madison Square Garden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how many times did we rush through that? <laughs> so that's uh. That's a little bit it got a little weird, but yeah, the DLC drops were good. The underground was fun. Yeah, the underground was that sort of uh, procedurally generated dungeon. Right, exactly. Yeah, dungeon crawl, pretty version, much. Version of the dungeons, pretty much. Yeah, which I I pumped in a lot of hours in the dark zone. I'm not in the dark zone. The underground. 
I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I still haven't reached max level. Yeah, it's, I'm, it, it's just a grind. Even yeah, for, exactly. for somebody like myself, I love grindy games. I'm a Diablo guy, Diablo three. Even I was like, wow, this underground is like you have to grind. Yeah, you really just, have to grind. You just at that point, the game was already starting. To cut. It, you got new life into it, but not enough. Yeah, it, it would. It would. In my opinion, you would get sort of those brief resurgences of life, but then it would die down again. We played the other uh, DLC too, right? I forget what it's called. Survival? Yeah. What it was called? Yeah. That was which, was, which was an interesting take on the Battle Royale formula. I'm not sure if it was Battle Royale, but well, I guess it was, right? Yeah, because you had to make it to the center of the Dark Zone. You had to weather the elements and stay alive and, and not get killed by other players. Yeah. I mean, that, that was an interesting, uh, I guess not enough for us to buy it, but yeah, it was yeah. interesting. It was, def- it was definitely interesting to try to stay warm and... and, and Choose whatever resources. Exactly. Like, and, and, and from what I understand, they even added another currency. Yes, there were. Oh, I forgot what the name of the currency was. They added so much. They added skins. They added a new currency. They added uh, global events. They added so much. I'm forgetting about the um. What are these things? The the raids. Not not the raids. The, I forget what they were called. No, I, th- I think they were called. Well, no, they weren't called strikes. I, I'm, I'm confusing that with Destiny. Were they the raids? They had to have been the raids. They had like daily challenges and stuff. Yes, they had the daily they, challenges. And we again, we played the same missions over and over again. So it kind of got it, a little. Yeah, that's the thing. When you play one mission over, and even the difficulty, they just add more enemies. They're they real. Nothing really changes. But they make the enemies stronger. That's what it was. Which it, it kind of bothered me that it it, it it sort of became like Math Blaster. All you saw were numbers popping up. Yeah, yeah. After a while, it starts to get it yeah. starts to get a little dull. So, but they and I um I was I was they had their own podcast, so I I listened to I listened to, I, I watched their live streams. Yeah, exactly. They, good they, they did keep uh, the community informed uh, a lot. You know, they were up there every week. I'm sure they are still are still doing it now. We, yeah. I appreciate the fact that they were able to constantly keep the community updated. This is what we're working on, and they would have charts, pie charts, and this is the time to kill before, and this and, and right. I, yeah, I, I was that. like, wow, these guys like they're really they're really making an effort. And you know what? I think Ubisoft has slowly start started to turn the corner as far as being able to efficiently not only release a game but sort of support it. Two years after. Yeah, I mean, that's another game that I still have friends on my bait list that they play Division now and then. Wow, they're, they're, they're dedicated. So, but that goes to show, even the gear, that they always update the gear. It gets to the point where I, I didn't even know what the game was at, the, at a certain point. Um, that, that was one game that their support was always good. Well, not always good, but devs always supported the game until the end, until now. Yeah, until now. And another, another Ubisoft game that really, really surprised me at the level that they've taken the game is Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. I mean, I when that game came out, I don't even know, like, what is that? Like, <laughs> like, I just didn't even... I knew I know what Rainbow Six is, but I couldn't quite figure out what this game is. So I just never even bothered with it. Yeah, it was supposed to be... A, it's a tactical shooter, right? It was so a it six, turned six, into something else. Yeah, like, it turned into something completely different. And they pumped out... Because when it first came out, it pretty much had no content, which was one of the big complaints. They didn't have right. enough maps. They didn't have enough uh, operators. And then all of a sudden, and I'm talking about literally overnight, they just started throwing out operators left and right. You're getting new maps. You're getting new you know, new weapons and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow. They, they really, and now it's one of the best yeah. you know, tactical shooters out there. If you see the stream numbers and you know, Twitch. It's YouTube, one of the highest games. It's one of the highest games. And I was like, wow, this game. And then, like how you said, the game just started taking on a life of its own. Right. And it ended up becoming this juggernaut that it is today. Yeah, and like there, it's esports and all that. Believer was on sale. I forgot what the price was. And I was actually contemplating on picking this game up because it's very tactical. And I've seen, you know, some of the live streams and some of the some of the gameplay footage. And it's it's not one of those games where you could just run and just, you know, call of duty it. Yeah, it's yeah. like the one one man army. No, you really got to tactically plan your way. If you if you're attacking, you got to plan a certain way. If you're defending, you got to defend a certain way too. And each operator has its strengths and its weaknesses. Right. Which makes for very very interesting gameplay. combination. Yeah, it makes for very very interesting gameplay. I mean, I know they've had like free weekends and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I'm surprised that I never took it never took advantage of it or never took part in a free weekend. But I think it was only on PC. No, I think it's been on PS4. 
you know what? Uh, Next time, if they do have one, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep track and I'm gonna download it. Yeah, I'm sure they have. I mean, we can't talk about a game being supported without talking about Fortnite. Right. I mean, that's now it's the juggernaut of the gaming community. And you know what? Like, I just feel like we can't have like a podcast or some something without somehow Fortnite <laughs> sneaking its way into into the topic. How long is it been? in every facet of? Uh, How long has it been now if that this game has taken off? It was took off in what was it, 2017 or 2018? 17. 2017, and we're, it's still like. Well, it, I mean, the Battle Royale mode, I think, was a little bit later. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yes, yes, but man, they, like they then just, it blew up. Yeah, and they just recently added seasons, and it's just. I'm sorry, like I'll say it again. You know, I tried it. I re- dude, God knows, I really tried playing Fortnite, and for some reason, I just couldn't get into it. But I can see, I can see the draw. Like all the all the young kids are playing it. Yeah, it's a young man's game. That's what, that's what that is. <laughs> that's what that is. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, you can't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know any older people playing. I'll put it here no, that me way. Neither. Yeah, me neither. There isn't one older person that I know of who's saying, "Oh, you're getting on that Fortnite?" No, it's all young people. That's fine. I mean, if it's, if it's for them, that's fine. They can stay over there and they'll play. Uh, Overwatch or whatever. Yeah, speaking of seasons, new new season of Overwatch, which I mean, that's another game that I uh, when you think about hours. <laughs> Listen, man, I I don't want to be that guy, but I'm but the you're type of, that guy. No, no, I'm the type of person. You know what? Let me let me look at other people's profiles. <laughs> I, I I legitimately like. I look at other people's profiles. Now, not to be all like sneaky and creepy about it, like, oh, I want to see what... No, I want to see like what people are using, who they're playing. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I just, I just for some strange reason, one night I decided to look up your profile. Let me see who he's using. In, in the in-game, I don't know if I, to explain it, in Overwatch, you can look at your in-game profile, not your PS4 profile. Exactly, exactly. Your in-game profile. Yeah, yeah please, do, please help me not sound so creepy. Go, go ahead, go ahead. You're so, <laughs> it's not that hard. You just, it's, I think, one button press, or one or two, to get into, you know, just to look at. I, I've been there before. It's not, it's nothing, I don't think it's, as you said, to see who, who's using what. Exactly. Um, and one of the can... best heroes. And you can look up hours played. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing because I was like, oh, you know, let, let me see, you know, who he's, who, who his top characters were. And you know you can you can view competitive stats, you can view all time stats, you can view I think just um, quick play stats, so on right. and so forth. For some strange reason, I looked at the top right hand corner and I saw hours played, bro. And I, said, I think you put all time, right? Yeah, all time stats, and, and and it gave me you know hours played and wins or whatnot, bro. I think you have a problem. <laughs> I think you need medical attention because you are up to. 459 hours but then again in my defense yeah no but then again your your i guess your rank kind of shows because it, well, it does it does use the whole prestige where like you yeah. get to level 100 then you you go around the horn again and what are you level your four stars right yeah i'm, I'm level 51 right now so i'm right, halfway so rank, to yeah level time. level 51 four star rank listen man i've, I've had a lot of <laughs> There's been a lot of nights going into 2 and 3 a.m. <laughs> and you see how I play where I just go right into the next match. Oh, my God, man. Like, there are some times, dude, you get into it. I I, I, I did I did, I did warn you. No, no, no. You did warn me. I and did I, and tell you, listen, I get a little, I don't know the word that you want to use. I don't say salty, but. <laughs> dude, you rage a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Okay. Just a tad. I, I, I'm not I'm with that. No, no, no. But, but considering. The scope of the game. You, we're we're both playing now in competitive. I don't, and 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 to, I don't rage in every in any other game. You played with me in a lot of games. That is true. That is true. In your defense, yes, you have never ever ever raged in any other game that I that we've played together. Battlefield, Division, uh, whatever. So and, and, I am, and I told I did tell you. Listen, I get a little uh, excited. <laughs> and then there's Overwatch. But then no, again, no, no, no. In, in the competitive scene, you know, we do play competitive. We don't play quick matches or anything else. You know, it, it a lot of it depends on how you perform and if you win or lose. Right. If you win, you go up a rank. If you lose, you lose points. So I can understand where 
the competitiveness comes in, and I appreciate that level of energy. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a little, it goes a little into cold red, but <laughs> no. But th- face it, there are some people out there, and it, it's not only Overwatch, Overwatch, you know, Battlefield, so on and so forth. People don't know how to play the game correctly, and that's what that, that's what upsets me. Yeah. I get a little upset. And we're getting you know, off topic. Yeah, we're we're getting off topic, but what is always kind of baffled me about Overwatch, right, is their level of commitment to supporting this game. I think Overwatch is at the top, in my opinion. I mean, I've played the game two two or three years, two years, and... Have you played the game since day one or no? No. Well, remember we played the beta? Yes, we played the the beta. You didn't like it. I I, I didn't like it at first. And um, I took a year, like, I, I, I dipped in and out of some streams and watching on YouTube, and I started to I get a little itch, and um, and then I got it for Christmas, and that was it. And that I was mean, it. But going back to the support, they're always on YouTube, putting out videos of the patches. Uh, they just released something today. Um, did, they, did they really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, some of the characters now I know some people are, are off and on about it you know Mercy in particular has, is not the same character oh she... no 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 and I've, I've played it from the very beginning as far as you know the, the, the free weekends and we played the beta Vanilla Mercy compared to Mercy now completely different character even when I picked it up and I picked it up uh, for Black Friday and I used Mercy for the first time it was a completely different character I didn't know how to use her because now Mercy has the ability to revive Without using her special, right? It, it, it's alt. Yeah, right. and before before her her special was she revives everybody within a certain right. radius. Now it's well, now different. her alt was the revive to revive one person. Now yes, it's, and then it changed her so many times. Where I mean, I, I don't really play her that much, so I can't. But I know her abilities. She's one character that's completely different. Uh, Torbjorn is another character that's different. Um, and then they added, they, they added all these all these new characters. They're consistently get adding maps. And I have seen that Tior, Torbjorn, I don't even know how to, how to pronounce his name. Torbjorn? Torbjorn. You, you would know because he's tech, he, I think he's your top ranked character. You, you, right you now, see, but Reinhardt is uh, right there. No, no, wait. Actually, yeah. Tior, Tior, oh, I can't even You know who I'm talking about. Torbjorn. Torbjorn. And Reinhardt, they're both at a hot 99 hours. <laughs> but Reinhardt's about to take it. I do feel Reinhardt is your, your best character. I, I feel. He's still versatile in so many different ways. And a lot of people don't even use him. And I, I, I like and I like to be that guy to push. All right, let's go. We're, we're moving. Let's go. Don't remind me because you, you're always <laughs> the one yelling at everybody. Get in the point. Get, get in the, the point. point. Why yeah. isn't anybody in the point? Why are you up there? Like, uh, okay, I feel like telling you, bro, just... I, I like just and, the, and Reinhardt is that guy. Reinhardt is that no, character. You're right. you're right, and and being able to see the characters and how they've evolved, all the characters that they've added, and those characters evolving, the maps, the the and what I really like about the way they've supported this game, and I think it it should be set as a standard for multiplayer games, is how they deal with cheaters and how they deal with the toxic community. I will say, oh. <laughs> Much is a little toxic. Um, it is. It is. You know, we the times that we played, um, people just leave. Well, um, it's, it's not only that they leave, and I didn't believe it at first, but I, I don't know if it was you who warned me or somebody who I was playing with. There are people I still don't know why that they throw games. Yeah. I why, But why would you do that? Just I don't understand. Just because. Why. Just because they can. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I do. Like going back to what you said, you can report them. Uh, there's a reporting feature in the game. But n- when you do report them, mind you, it's something that Overwatch and Blizzard Activision, they take it very seriously. I as far mean, as yeah. I understand, they do. Yeah. It, did it, I, I think it was a couple of months ago, they actually released an Excel spreadsheet of all the people that were account boosting. Oh, wow. Which I didn't know was a thing. I didn't, I didn't know what account boosting was. I had to go into like Reddit and I had to go into the forums and I actually asked the question, what is account boosting? All the feedback that I got, it, it, this is an, I didn't realize this is a very, very yeah. serious thing. thing. Yeah. You know, people using other people's accounts to boost their stats, to bo- boost the characters, and it, it's a form of cheating. Yeah. And, and the, know, the Blizzard I, is, seems to be on the... They're on top of it. Right. And I actually opened up the spreadsheet. 
oh my God, the amount of players that got banned for something as simple as account boosting. Really, big, big kudos to Activision and Blizzard for taking, for taking that step to properly support a game. Yeah, because they don't really, I mean, they, in your opinion, would they have to? Or is it something like, I guess they don't have to, but to keep the game on the up and up, they have I think, I think it's more of the topic of the community spoke up loud enough to where Activision and Blizzard, okay, we have to do something. We can't allow this type of toxicity to continue in our game. That that's what I think. Okay, and again, they they, I mean, you you can avoid certain players. I believe with the two or three, you can put it on like a like a ban list. Right. You could. Uh, we did it the other night where we joined a group to kind of, and that helps a little bit. You know, it does. Yeah. Everybody's does. on the same page. Everybody's trying to do the same thing rather than just going to uh, the searching the search mode. Yeah, because then it's just a roll of the dice. You don't know who the hell you're gonna get. Right. So, and that group feature that's pretty new. That's not even a year old. That's that was added almost when I stopped playing. When did you stop playing? Um, I want to say season eleven or twelve, something like that. What season are we in now? Fifteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, fourteen. Oh, okay, so you you skip two two three seasons. <laughs> okay. And and, and, I didn't and yet break. and yet somehow you're still at four hundred and fifty hours. And, and you, and you, yeah, you break, decided huh? you decided to take a little break. Even I need a break. Yeah, but but really, man, I, I I'm a little disappointed in myself for getting into Overwatch this late in the game. But now, but now you see. Oh yeah, now I see 100. percent You know, I, I'm a believer. I've I've drank the Kool Aid. I I'm in Overwatch. I like how they still they're still giving events now. They have. Uh, oh yeah, they have that that uh, Anna event. Yeah, they have the Anna event and. Not let's let's look past the game, right? Let's let's look on the other side of that coin. Even the the shorts, the films that they oh, release. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm because my brother, he's he loves those animated shorts. He really loves them, and he's like, "When is Blizzard gonna release a movie?" And I'm thinking, you know what? That that would be kind of cool, like to release an Overwatch movie because obviously, or just like um, just put all those shorts in one big highlight reel. The animation style, I I love their animation style. It's that, that Pixar... Yeah, it's that Pixar DreamWorks. It's a different type of animation style, and I love it. I love the voice acting, the character models, the character design. It's very colorful. And you know what? I, I'm glad I got the game. They're still supporting it. I, I'm really, like... And wow. even the loot box system. It's, it works for what it is. I wish it was a little bit better. Like, but... how, how, how would you fix it? Because to I, me, I, mean, I, I, I just think sometimes you get items. The other night I got, in one loot box, I got two items for the same character. So you think it's not randomized enough? Uh, maybe maybe it is, and it, I'm just getting the, low, the short end of the stick. Because you have, I, somebody like myself who has gotten into the game relatively late, I think the loot box system is fine. But then again, I don't have the amount of unlockables that you have. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that like you have, you probably have so much unlocked. So it would make sense for you to kind of feel that way, like, oh, I'm getting stuff for this. Uh, I want something for a specific character. I can't get it. You know, why is it? So I, I understand. And the only thing they good they do is um, if you get a duplicate, they just give you currency. Yes, they just um, give you currency, yeah. But I just wish it was a little bit more random. Or if, if you're going to make me pay, I understand the system with a loot box. I'm, I'm not stupid, but if I'm going to pay money, let's say if I buy five loot boxes from the store, I was like a little bit more control of what I'm getting. No, I hear you. But there is the in-game currency that you can just buy with whoever skin you, if you want to, if you really want a skin, you can use the in-game currency to buy that skin. But if I'm spending five dollars or ten dollars, I will have a little bit more control. And and one more game that I, that I want to add to the list that I'm kind of shocked as far as the whole support is a game that I bought recently, Star Wars Battlefront. Now tell the listeners how much did you spend on this. I spent a whopping seven forty nine. That's seven dollars <laughs> and forty nine cents for this game because they had it on sale. They had a flash sale. And you did. You, did you still were on the front about it. You asked yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought to myself, you know what? Can it get lower, or is is this pretty much the lowest it's going to get? And you told me, listen, I think it's the lowest it's going to get. I don't think it it's might gonna get go lower, lower, but you know, why are you going to wait? Uh, like, who knows? It's but Christmas. This is, this is the season where this is the lowest until maybe next Christmas. And I'm thinking to myself, should I get it? Ah, remind you, it's $7.49 that I was on the fence about. But I'm like, you know what? 
Seven dollars and forty nine cents. What you know? What the funny thing is, what tipped me? Dice. Once again, they were updating the community as to new characters that they were releasing. And Dice is another company. They they always they are out in front. They always we're doing this. We're doing you know they they they're another company that uh, their communication is really good. And that's the, one of the reasons why I bought the game. I was looking at the community feed and sort of the the new, I would have to say patch notes and what they fixed and the, the new characters they added. And they added, you know, General Grievous and, and Obi-Wan Kenobi as the, the latest, you know, the latest characters that they're giving away for free. It's not part of a DLC. It's free. It's pretty much free. You just have to unlock it. You have to play and you got to earn enough credits and you can unlock the characters. So I'm like, oh man, that, that's, that, that's pretty cool. You know, they, they were up front. You know, they completely restructured the hell out of the game as far as the loot boxes, and they kind of did away with it. And they, there's still a card-based system, and you get kind of get to level up the cards. The level of support that they've given this game, and the game's a year old. They just recently had, and get this, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they had okay. a triple XP event. Wow. For for just the, the base characters, like the uh, the Assault class, Specialist class, you know, all the, all the normal classes, right. not the heroes. Okay. Because they have different events for the heroes, for the for just the normal classes, triple XP. Then I went from level fifteen in each character class <laughs> to level thirty in like a, in just like a day, day and a half of just playing. And then you know you would have to play rush to really get. Oh, they have max. rush mode. Yeah, they got rush mode, and it's believe me when I tell you, it is very the production value. It's like okay, it's up there. Like you feel like you're in the mood. Like you feel like and and the rush mode is obviously. The biggest battles of the Star Wars series, you know, you oh, got wow. the, battle, the Battle of Hoth, the Battle of Geonosis, the Battle of Kashyyyk. You have all those major battles, and you're playing just like how Battlefield. You're playing rush mode, and it these these battles could last up to like half an hour, yeah, or forty five minutes. A lot of Battlefield, like, you know. And mind you, you have all the heroes, so you see people running around as Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker, <laughs> General Grievous. You know, these they're all out there, and and like it, it's Star Wars. It's the best and the worst Wait, of Star Wars. Well, you said it's the best use of license. By far. The sound, the visuals, you know, DICE, you know, they're using the Frostbite engine. The Frostbite engine, to me, is one of the best engines up there with, you know, the Fox engine, Unreal. The game just looks so gorgeous. That's why, I love, you, that's why I love DICE. I mean, we, we played a lot of Battlefield in our day, and DICE, you really feel like they're, they're, they're on our side. Yeah. And that, like I said, that's the reason why I picked up the game. I saw the community feed. They, they did a, a lot of patchwork and they released new characters. And they're still, I think, working on one, maybe two additional characters. I want to say Anakin Skywalker might be the next one. And what but about he, Max? But, but he's, he's, um, he's going to be a skin of Darth Vader. Because, you know, each character has different skins. You have... Okay. You know, Jedi Obi Wan, and then you have General Kenobi, and then you have I think it's Obi it's Obi Wan Kenobi, Obi Wan Kenobi Jedi Master, and then General Kenobi. So okay. each of those heroes, they have different skins that you want to work towards. And I think the next one for Darth, I think Darth Vader is the only one that only that has no skins. It's just Darth Vader. Yeah, and well, I think really... well, they're working on Anakin Skywalker. I think Anakin Skywalker and Count Dooku are okay. the next two. And I think they're still work. They even released um, the skins for from the movie Han Solo. Okay. The Solo, the Solo movie. They gave yeah. you Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. The skins from that movie. So you can be um, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? The, the singer. Oh, you could be uh, Childish Gambino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could be him. You know, and and they actually give you the Millennium Falcon from that Solo movie. Have you seen that movie, by the way? Yeah, I actually saw it. No, it's on Netflix right now. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I saw it. It it's not as bad as the fan base makes it out to seem. It's an entertaining movie. Okay. It does a serviceable. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah, just watch it for entertainment value. Okay. You know, it's it's good that they build up the lore and you're watching. I have it seen on. all the new um of this generation. Let's say uh, the I've seen um, I've been up to date. Good, but you know that's another game that I'm glad that I picked it up. But then again, I notice I've been picking up a lot of games a year after because that's where kind of the I want to say the the hot point. Yeah, because um, year... the the early adapters. I mean, you said this before, but yeah. the early adapters always get kind of screwed. I really, I honestly, really feel bad for them because they're the ones that suffer. 
than for people like me to have the game that it was supposed to be during release during the release period. And you're paying five bucks, you know, seven dollars. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. And what I recommend is, if you're a Star Wars fan, there's no reason why you shouldn't pick up this game. Unfortunately, like I said, the loot box controversy completely marred the the reputation of this yeah. game. It's it, if you look at the review scores. They're very they good. good review scores. They're yeah. eights, not like some eights. I saw a nine. It's a very good shooter. If you love Battlefield, if you love those kind of games, it's a Star Wars franchise. I mean, come on, it, it's a no brainer. But you know what? I'm glad I picked it up. It's another game that the support really dice did a, a fantastic job getting a hold of this controversy and kind of turning it around. Yeah, because that game could have easily um, died. Yeah, it could have easily have just ruined ruined not only EA but ruined EA and dice. Yeah. But no, I think at, at once EA kind of once once the House of Mouse made that phone call to EA, <laughs> yeah. Dice Dice was like, no, 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 okay, we're taking control of this. I didn't read that. That did happen. No, it did happen. Okay. But you see, the way it played out in my head, I know, I know. I know. Like <laughs> Mickey Mouse sitting in the boardroom with his Mickey Mouse voice and say, "You guys effed up." I am not the type of person to be effed with. Yeah. Kind of, and I'm thinking kind of like the Mickey Mouse from South Park. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if you yeah. ever saw that episode, that, yeah. that's what I think of. These sort of developers have set the standard, in my opinion, for the way games need to be developed. And this is how they should be developed. And I can go into adding, you know what the other game is? Warframe. Yeah. They uh, just, for Honor. You mentioned For Honor. For Honor, Warframe. Because I know Warframe just recently added. We're talking about weeks. They just added a completely new free expansion called Fortuna. And they're working on another expansion, I think it's called Railjack, which is supposed to be released sometime this year. I want to say sometime this year, which looks absolutely amazing. There is no way this game should exist. Yeah, that game came out when the PS4 came out. 2014. And, that, and I, that was like I, one of the first games I, I tried just to be like, with it, like there's nothing else to play. Yeah, I, st- I stopped playing it for about two years because there were just other games that yeah. I just needed to play. I'm like, you know what? Let me get back into Warframe. Holy cow. The amount of free content that this game has gotten. Like I said, there's no way this game should exist based on all the free stuff that they just pumped into this game. We're talking about 100% free. Yeah. Obviously, they have their own currency. And, you know, I've spent some of the currency. And you can get the currency at a relatively steady pace. So you don't have to actually put – you don't have to actually pay money. No. I have not spent one single dime. And and I'm – it's one of those games that I'm like, oh my god, like I have to stop playing because I'm like, I can spend hours, hours upon hours into this game. And knowing for the fact that it's free, it's just, it takes it to that next level. Right. I really wish current developers take, you know, take these guys as, a, as an example. You know, this is the way we need to do our games. Well, it's going to be interesting. I want to mention real quick. Uh, interesting to see what happens with uh, Fallout 76. You're absolutely right because, you know, the game's still relatively new. And Bethesda seems like they're trying to fix it some way. One way, one way, shape, or form, they're trying to get a hold of it. But I think as of right now, the publicity is just, it, it, it's, it's steamrolled it. It's going to be interesting to see what the player base is, let's say, six months and what the game will look like. Yes, that, that is going to be interesting because the player base is going to determine whether this game succeeds or fails. And there are people who are really, they're pushing for this game to, you know, to be supported. And it, it's really... Nice well, I believe but that, but that's the will support it. Oh yeah, but, how long or how much? Exactly, exactly. How long they're going to support it? That's the real question. I have no, I have faith that a year from now we're going to talk about this game a year from now, and it will be the game that Bethesda originally wanted to make, because that that's the trend that we're seeing. But again, but seventy five, seventy six, kind of they they messed it up once again. You called it. You so. said it. You know, and you know what? I have to thank you for that because you were the reason why I didn't pick up that game. Yeah, I told you, man. So, so my bank account thanks you. <laughs> and and you, you cheaply bought <laughs> Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, there you go. Star Wars. And by not buying that game, I could buy Resident Evil, the Resident Evil remake. Ah, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to end it on a down note. Unfortunately, you know, we have come to that part of the episode. We have to say our goodbye. So check us out on www.levelbasedgaming.com. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of things coming out right now. And uh, follow us on podbean.com. And as always, my name is Felipe Parada. The other guy is Oscar Portillo. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs>